Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I've been out here having some fun in the desert today with the all new 2020 GMC Sierra 2500 HD Duramax AT4. And well, this is a lot of truck, so I'm gonna show it to you inside and out. We're gonna take it for a little drive and I'm gonna tell you what I really think. Before we get out on the drive, let's have a look at this thing because it's there's a lot to look at here. You know what I'm saying? First thing is in this redesign, and you've already seen the pictures, this is tall. I mean, look how tall this is. They, that was something they really pointed out in their press materials, and it's really tall. I mean, look at that. It's like a wall. In the AT4, we have a lot of little things that set this apart visually. Body color bumpers, those big red hooks down there, and a huge, what they call black chrome grill. It really sort of sets off with this white in a sort of stormtrooper way, I think. Big hood scoop. This actually is for the Duramax engine. It pulls air through there as well as from behind the grill. It's like a pretty, pretty ornate intake system on this thing. You'll notice LED headlights. The fog lights on this, also LED. Up on the cab, those are LED cab marker lights. At night, this thing lights up just like an LED Christmas tree. I like it. As this does have the AT4 premium package, I've got 20 inch wheels as opposed to the smaller 18s. Nice off-road tires. As we move around the corner, you'll see some very nice running boards on this that are nice and grippy for my boots. A couple things to point out and notice here. I like the way that GMC has cut the fender openings on their particular brand of trucks. A lot of people didn't like that so much. I sort of, uh, it's growing on me. It really sort of sets it apart. And on the AT4, I like the black lip molding with those LED side markers. That's pretty sexy. The other thing to note is look at these huge mirrors. Electric adjustable mirrors, they slide out. They're great for towing, but they're massive. They're absolutely massive. Coming around the back of the Sierra, this is, I think, one of the better looking of the two Chevrolet versus GMC, especially from this angle. I like the shapes in the quarter here. I like the shape of the taillights and the shape of the tailgate. This is something that I really like to point out because it's a GM exclusive. That is the step bumper. I can't tell you how great this is. It's much easier to use than Ford's pull out man step that comes out of their tailgate. You just jump in, that's it. This tailgate, very special. This is another exclusive here with GMC. This is what they call their multi-pro tailgate. It's optional on most of their trucks. On this one, you can see that it just sort of opens in two different ways. You can open that small top part if you've just got some things you wanna lay over the top of that without pulling the whole thing down. There's also a little item that flips up there that helps sort of act as a blocker, whether it's the small or the full tailgate that's down. It's kind of a neat little touch. Some people might call it a marketing gimmick. Maybe it is. It's just kind of a cool little deal. Note that with that tailgate down, I've got a spray and bed liner here, 12 hooks in there, LED lighting, all sorts of power outlets. Also note this has the gooseneck package, which is pre-set up to put your, your hitch system in for your gooseneck or your fifth wheel trailer. This is basically a truck that I think looks pretty good. It's pretty macho. I'd say if I uh, pulled up to pick up my boys to take them out to the club for the night, they'd say daddy's pretty butch. The AT4 trim grade pretty much means fully loaded. Now, it's not the fanciest interior you're going to find in this truck as far as trim grades go, but it's got pretty much everything there is to have in way of equipment. I've got a sunroof. I've got an interior that's decorated specific to the AT4. That includes dark aluminum accents, black leather with tan colored accents, both in the seats and in the stitching around on the dash. These leather seats are both heated and cooled on this vehicle. It's got the premium AT4 package, heated seats in the back as well. Very nice looking seats. They're firm, they're comfortable, and with the heating and ventilation, at least with the ventilation, I found them to be very comfortable during the hot summer that I've been sitting through, except for today, which is cold and rainy. As I look around this interior, it's designed very much in the GM DNA. If you spent time in Chevy or GMC trucks in the past, you're gonna feel like you're in one, right? This is a very well-designed center stack. It's got an eight inch screen for the infotainment system. All the controls for everything are right here in one place. I like that. A nice bank of switches. You've got all the plugs you need for everything. You've got 12 volt ports. You've got a 120 outlet. You've got your trailer brake controller. Now the visibility in this truck 
is just as good as it is in the 1500. The difference is this hood is just a little bit taller and a little bit further out, so you definitely know you've got a hood in front of you, a little bit more so than you would down in the 1500. These mirrors on this, as I showed you from the outside, they're absolutely huge, and that's bolstered by a very good 360 degree camera system that gives you a backup and a 360 degree view that's high definition. It's not a small grainy image. They've done very well on that. The instrument cluster has a large digital screen in the center with two dials. All the information you could ever want is displayed there and you can customize that of course. This also has the head-up display which can put a lot of that information up there as well as off-road metrics like an inclinometer things like that. One of the things that strikes me most about this interior as far as a takeaway is its usability and its functionality. I've got a nice spot down here for my phone. It just lays right down there face up so I can see what's going on with it if something pops up. And there's a wireless charger there and a nice spot here on the side to tuck some other things. Drink holders right where you'd expect them. Huge storage down in here. You could put a laptop computer in there and a number of other things. I like when they give you a lot of storage down on the side of the console, storage there still. And here, General Motors Chevrolet, almost a trademark now, the double glove box. The infotainment system in this vehicle is not as fancy as you might find in some of the other options out there brand-wise, but it is a very good system. 8-inch display, color screen, graphics are very good, I think. And, you know, all the way back to my 2005 Hummer H2 that I've had, it had a very good system in it. And believe it or not, it's laid out very similarly. There's some DNA that traverses the years there. But of course, this is modern with all of the features that you'd expect now as far as connectivity, applications, navigation. And I find that it works very good. The sound's very good, Bose audio. And the menus just work. They're intuitive and it's what you'd expect. You don't have to think about it very much, which makes it good in my view. One of the things I always like to test on these, especially with a navigation system, is the voice control because it's one of the things that we are more often to use than anything else with voice control. What would you like? Address. Please say the address. 1440 East Indian School Road, Phoenix, Arizona. One moment, please. Okay. Searching for 1440 East Indian School Road, Phoenix, Arizona. Perfect. See, like I said, works pretty good. One of the features of the AT4 package are these rubber floor liners, and I absolutely love these things. You would spend a mint getting these things from WeatherTech. These are great because you can get in and out of this like I did all day today shooting with muddy boots and just drag that mud in here, and it never touches your carpet. It just You can pull these things out, hose them off, clean them off, and your carpet's golden. That, to me, is worth a lot of money. That, that's a big feature. I would take this over some of the other stuff, but nonetheless, here we are in the back seat. This is my first time in the full-size cab in this new generation of GM pickup truck, and I like it. There is a lot of space back here, a lot of headroom. There's actually a large indentation here above my head. Uh, if I had a cowboy hat on, I'd still have five or six inches above my head. But as you can see, I've got a lot of space. The seating position, the seat's nice and high. I don't feel like I'm sitting down, and I've got a lot of room to move here. I love this. These seats are set for my height about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, depending on my boots or tennis shoes or not. And I could have a 6'6 six six guy up front in that seat would still not be anywhere close to my knee. So I like the space that I've got back here. Vents, very important. Lots of ports, very important. And as I may have stated, heated seats back here on this trim grade, very nice. Fold down armrest. Now, when it comes to folding these seats for getting some other things back here, this lower folds upward. And then what you have here are these very interesting little openings that allow you to get into the back. I think that's kind of nice, a little storage cubby back there. I'm very pleased with this interior, and what I like about it best is, unlike the Ram, which is really design technique, a lot of beautiful, pretty forms and things like that, a lot of pizzazz, and very unlike the Ford, which is crap in my opinion, this interior is just a nice middle ground of functionality, good quality, and just down to business design that's made for living every day. All right, my friends, let's go for a quick drive. All right, this Duramax fires up nice and quick, settles into a nice purr. I love diesels in a truck. <sighs> let's get to the drive before I get into the weeds on that. We're starting out here on my little bit of an off-road trail, not hardcore off-roading, equivalent to a farm road. 
place out in the desert here that sort of gives me a chance to see how maneuverable this truck is and how the suspension treats you over some ruts and bumps. And I just love the way the diesel just sort of purrs along and you don't have to push into the throttle to get moving. What I'm finding out here so far is that this off-road suspension, the X31 and the Rancho shocks that come with this package, very much similar to what I've found in other GM trucks I've driven in the past, which is to say, tune pretty stiffly. Not the softest suspension of the big three. Ram tends to be a little bit more on the soft side, Ford somewhere in the middle, but it just, it really does sort of uh, give you a nice stiff ride out here if you like that. One thing I am noticing is a little bit of rattle in the steering going over some of the ruts and bumps. Not really bad, but just when you hit the big ones. And with this big heavy engine in the front, I notice going into some deep bumps like this, you do tend to bottom that front suspension against the bumpers just a little bit, even though it is a stiff suspension. Now, that was fun. If you're hearing sloshing going around in the back, that's because GM saw fit to make sure I had five gallons of diesel exhaust fluid for my week with it, just to make sure. Now, I haven't had to put any in it. You don't actually have to fill this thing that regularly. I just think it's adorable that GM wanted to make sure I had two cases, two cases. Anyway, time for the washboard road. All right, desert washboard road. Really, I think the most important test of any truck because this ribbed washboard surface can make even the best of vehicles feel like a big giant piece of crap. And it just rains, so there's a lot of deep, hard ruts. Washes have been running, so everything's cut up. But this, this surface can rattle a vehicle pretty good. And, and tell me how well it's built. How well-tuned is the suspension? That's what it's all about for me. Ooh, muddle. Muddle, mud puddle, mud puddle. Anyway, so what I'm finding out here is that this is very reminiscent of other GM vehicles I've driven out here. This stiff suspension, it's a hallmark of the company. Ooh, here's a rough one. Woo. This rough suspension translates a lot of rhythmic vibrations and shocks up into this cab. So what I'm getting is a little bit of shuddering in the door frames, which means the body structure is flexing enough that the doors are sort of moving around like little wings. Um, par for the course in GM trucks that I've tested in the past, nothing new here, and I think maybe a little bit more because we've got a lighter structure. They've did a lot of uh, light weighting with this new truck. So even though the frame is stiffer, perhaps more robust, ah, more mud, uh, that's translating a lot more harshness up in here. Now, the good news is, is that um, not getting a lot of vibration in the suspension, not getting a lot of instability, it still feels solid as a brick rolling along out here over this rough stuff. This is a big heavy truck, but still it feels very light on its feet and maneuverable, which, uh, you know, that's a good thing when you're out here, especially with a trailer and a bunch of toys, you want to feel like you've got control. All right, so the first question I always ask when it comes to the powertrain is how does it go? Oh, torque. Ah, and 60. Okay, so this engine and this transmission move this huge, heavy brick pretty quickly, pretty deliberately, I'd say. It takes a second to get moving, but once that torque kicks in, it just pushes you back in your seat. It's kind of like 747 taking off. It sort of builds up and then boosh, you're off. All right, well, that was pretty quick, wasn't it? Uh, so 445 horsepower, 910 pound feet of torque. That is a lot of torque. So that'll move a house. Literally, that's what this truck's for. The big change here, more so than the horsepower of the torque, is the 10 speed automatic transmission, Allison, as GMC calls it. Adds more gears, so driving around town, pulling a trailer, going up a hill, you can keep that engine in its happy spot more often. That's why the gears. It also gives you a better gear ratio spread from starting out to cruising on the freeway where that can enable better fuel economy. I find that it works very well. I have driven the 10-speed transmission that's in all of the Fords that is in 
all of the General Motors vehicles, variations of them, they're tuned to work very well. And this transmission also, I'm very happy with it. And this engine, I've always been happy with it in these trucks. It's just a nice, robust, well-rounded powertrain with the improvements they've made on it. Cattle Guard for 2020, um, it's just that much better. Fuel economy, now they don't publish EPA estimates for these big trucks. I actually got about 16 MPG city highway this week, which is pretty good considering what this thing weighs and how unaerodynamic it is going around town. So I'm pretty impressed with the powertrain. I haven't gotten to tow with it. There are other channels that do towing. I, I just, I'm not set up for that. But what I can tell you is, is having driven all three of the diesels, this sort of falls in between, I think. Uh, the Ram Cummins is a nice motor. It's a nice driving motor. Ford's engine is nice, but this has just got a nice bit of refinement that I don't find in some of those. Power, pretty close to some. I mean, you know, it's a war. These, these companies are always raising and changing their numbers. So if you don't like the numbers now, wait a couple of years. They'll tweak them a little bit more. But this is the powertrain, I think, that uh, if you test drive it, chances are you're going to be impressed with it. All right, my friends, wrapping it up for the 2020 GMC Sierra AT4 2500. This is a nice truck. I got to say I'm pretty impressed. But my three key takeaways are really the, the things that I really got out of this test drive. And the first thing is, is this powertrain is a lot more refined and a lot more drivable now that it includes that 10-speed automatic transmission. A lot of people are worried about a lot of gears, and this transmission gets rid of that worry because it doesn't, it doesn't hunt around for gears all the time like people think it would. It's always right where you want it. It's great around town because you're not bogging because you're waiting for the next gear to be in the right place. It's always right there. Once you get out on the highway, it levels out at a nice, quiet, low RPM, and that really helps the fuel economy. That's what it's for. It's, it's for fuel economy, and also when you're towing, it gives you a lot of steps when you're trying to accelerate up that hill with the big trailer. So, um, and it does it very well. It does it very well. So I'm very impressed with this powertrain as it's now configured. The next thing is, well, I like the character of this thing. As I said, I think this looks better than the Chevrolet. I like the overall feel and look of this thing, especially in this AT4 trim. I like those wheel lip moldings. I like the cut they've done on these wheel arches with that little angle. A lot of people sort of got thrown off by that, but I like it. I think it's pretty cool. I like the character of the truck. That is my second key takeaway. The third thing is, even though there's a lot different going on here, this is a still, it's still a good old GM truck. If you're a GM guy and you've had several of these things, even though this is a lot different, all new from the ground up, it's still the same when you get behind the wheel in terms of its feel, its character, and what you're gonna get out of it as to your expectations. It still rides buckboard rough out here off-road like every GM truck I've ever driven and I've owned a couple of them, uh, it, it still has that still has that GM feel. Even though it feels new and it's better and it's refined, uh, you, you're going to feel at home behind the wheel. And I said that about the Chevrolet when I tested it earlier this year. So there you go. There is my test drive for the 2020 GMC 2500 Sierra AT4. If you'd like to see my next great video, click right there on the square or subscribe to my YouTube channel down there on the round logo. Either way, Stay tuned.